I'm going to read from my translation of a novel titled El Rastro in Spanish, or The Remains in English, by the beloved, prolific Mexican intellectual Margot Glantz. Glantz is an expert in the work of Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz, who was a 17th century nun, and the novel opens with one of Sor Juana's sonnets, which contains ideas that the narrator examines repeatedly during the novel, uh, which is a rhythmic, propulsive monologue in her voice. I'm going to read the sonnet and then straight into the opening chapter. As I spoke to you, my dear, this afternoon, and your face, expression, actions made it clear that all my words were leaving you unmoved, I wished that you could see my heart laid bare. Then love, seeing my attempts, came to my aid, although it seemed impossible a task, and in the form of tears spilled out in pain, she helped me to distill my broken heart. Enough, my dear, enough, relent, let lie, let jealousy's cruel tyranny now cease. May vile suspicions and imagined signs cast no more stubborn shadows on your peace. For now you've seen, and in your hands you've held, my broken heart, in liquid humour, here distilled. My name is Nora Garcia. It's been years since I last came to the village. I park my car, then go shyly, warily, up to the front door and into the house. I barely recognise it. It's changed and not for the better. The garden's overgrown, the plants are dry, the grass is yellowing, there are patches of bare earth where before there were flowering shrubs. Down in the ravine, plane trees, trees with wide canopies. The place is full and I almost lose my nerve, my heart shrinking. There are a few people I know, no one I'm especially fond of, and perhaps others I've forgotten. It's been a long time. There's a woman I think I recognise, though her body looks bloated. Her face too. She looks a bit off colour. A funereal colour, perhaps? I'm exaggerating. I tell myself it's the news of his death, coming back to this house, the fear of remembering too much, the inevitability of seeing people I hate, people who have hurt me. The usual, I tell myself, uncertainties of the heart. The woman's name escapes me. She's looking at me. Mockingly? Derisively? Or is she just saying hello? Perhaps that's just how people look at you at funerals. Perhaps that's just life, to use an old phrase of my mother's, rest her soul. As Juan is resting now. Or at least I hope he is. I really do hope he rests in peace. I nod to the staff looking after the house, then head to the living room where the body's laid out. It's a large room, enormous really, full of musical instruments and sheet music scattered over a long table beside the computers and blank manuscript paper. Sheet music. Do people still use sheet music? I look around, scanning the wall-to-wall -wall bookshelves packed with books. That's as it should be. Books go in bookshelves, or ought to. The paintings on the walls alongside patches of damp. Several people standing around the coffin. I go over. Like all coffins, this one has a kind of window. Or is it a door? So you can see part of the body. His face is pale. I suppose that's as it should be. It's simple, really. He's dead now. And dead people's faces have no colour in them. His heart has stopped beating, that's all. I tell myself that's all there is to it. He's dead now. He's dead. He's no longer breathing. His heart has stopped beating. His blood has stopped flowing. I start peering around, nosily, then stop, and ask myself how I'm feeling. But the truth is I don't feel anything. Anything at all. My pulse beats calmly, regularly, normally, a hundred beats a minute. There's a strong smell of mildew invading everything. The room, the coffin, my body. I smell of mildew now, of damp, intense damp. Someone moves away from the coffin and I approach in order to see better, see him better, to see Juan better. I lean over, my cheek almost touching his face. 
His hands are folded over his chest and he's holding a cross. I didn't expect that. His face is such a strange colour. Olive. Sallow. As if he were dead, I think. That must be it. That's what's happened. Yes, of course. It's so simple. He's dead. His heart has stopped beating. A small, greying, or rather ash-coloured moustache covers his lips, thinner now than ever. His skin is transparent, his cheekbones protruding, his high, boxy forehead framing sunken eyes, the eyelids tight shut. The white pine wood coffin with gold inlay, several reeds leaning against the walls, obscuring the paintings. Reeds on the bookshelves, too, obscuring the books. Candles next to the coffin, four of them. And a cloying smell, the smell of mildew. Why am I surprised by this? It's always hot and humid here. The thick smell of mildew. Juan is wearing a light, straw-coloured jacket that matches his pale face and the colour of the wood. His tie and shirt are the same hue.